And as we said, things now go up a notch to a whole new level, moving to his later encounters. And we're going to start with this fascinating experience. And we're now in uh, 1992, so it's a number of years after his uh, last UFO sighting. And it's over to John to take you through what happened with this. Thank you. Well, let me say thank you for staying. I do appreciate it, even though it's a little slow, and therefore it's taken longer than it was open. Anyway, so we moved on to 1992, and this time I've moved to uh, a road called Sussex Avenue, which really is a 10-minute walk from where I used to live. It had a smaller garden at the back than the one I was used to. Still didn't like gardening, even though it was smaller. Uh, a smaller garden in the front. As you walk through the front door, you got a staircase to the left. To the right, you've got a dining room and kitchen. And directly in front, you've got <coughs> a lounge. As you go up the stairs, they turn 90 degrees back on themselves. And you got there, and you got two bedrooms to your left, one bedroom to your right, and directly in front of you, you've got the bathroom. We needed this because then we got extra children, and they were getting a bit crowded in the other house, so the council had to move us. So I'm not a rich man back then, couldn't afford to buy my own place. I was still building my own career. I took priority because I wanted to look after the family. As you can see by the early photos, my son was involved, so were my two daughters, and they all, I'm glad to say, achieved black belt. So that was really good. <coughs> but to get back to uh, the summer of 1992, Again, I've been working, come home from work, and gone to bed. The wife was already in bed, so I snuggled in beside her and started the process of going to sleep. When all of a sudden there was this awful tingling sensation around my feet, and this tingling got more intense and began to move up the leg. This made me take notice. I didn't know what was going on. And we'll come back to that in a minute. When I looked at the end of the bedroom, where my feet was facing, there's a wardrobe, fitting wardrobe, and there was this very big white light. As a few seconds passed, the centre of the white light became brighter and in a couple more seconds this person, alien, thing, whatever you want to call it, stepped out of the light. There was this light of vortex. I don't know. That's something that came to mind a long time after when people started talking about vortexes because, you know, up until that point, it was all science fiction. Uh, this time they started to talk about vortexes, so I took it aboard. And this object was black because it was silhouetted against the light. And it moved to the end of the bed. When the tingling was getting so intense, you know, I was starting to rub my legs. I didn't want to wake the wife up. I didn't want her to see what I was looking at. I didn't want her to experience it. So, I kept quiet, I stared at him, and then eventually I closed my eyes and told her to go away. When I, I cut long story short, when I opened my eyes, the, whatever you want to call it, had disappeared, and I was left looking at the wardrobes. This particular sighting disturbed me quite a bit. Because now, not only have seen your phones, but I've got people walking into my bedroom. I haven't asked them to come in. 
They haven't asked my permission. They're just walking. Why? Who are these people? What gives them the right to do what they're doing? Well, you know, when you talk to people about UFOs, about aliens, that's fine. Don't worry about it, it was an alien. Don't worry about it. If it was a Russian soldier, there'd be a Third World War. But because it was an alien, who cares? But I cared. You know, as good as I said, I was quite disturbed by this event. Didn't last that long. But my legs was tingling like hell. A little bit later, I found out through a very good friend of mine who was an Indian that one of the things that you can feel when you are going to talk to the other side and the spirits are coming kind of close to you is this tingling sensation. Now I have to ask myself a question. If this entity was, let's say, from another world, and it got to be because we couldn't do it, we couldn't open the water and up and walk through it. So it got to be two things. One, something that I was imagining, and two, something that was real. And to be absolutely honest, I was a little bit worried about the fact that I didn't jump out of bed and smash these eddies <laughs> coming into my bedroom because I didn't. I didn't think about it. It wasn't something that occurred to me. I was interested in what I was looking at. I was trying to work out what the hell it was. If somebody walked in your bedroom in the middle of the night, don't you think you'd ask yourself a question? Who the hell are you? What do you want? That's the question I asked myself. Again, I couldn't talk to her. I couldn't wake her up. Say, look, 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 look. I was on my own. Again, I felt that they were trying to make contact. And this is the way I began to look at it. For some reason, which I now know, having looked at a lot of UFO cases now, and abductions, I do realise that these people have been doing this Maybe for longer than I realise. But I have no memory of it. I only have memory of this. Why should I have memory of it? Because it was so unusual. That's why. And again, I wasn't in a position to pick up a mobile phone and take a picture. Smile. Gotcha. All I could do was lie there taking what was going on and then trying to rationalise it in my head, which is very difficult. Okay, so let's have a look at the, uh, the drawing that John's done with this. Uh, oh yeah, he's, he's now moved house, so he's in Sussex Avenue in Margate now, so different address to those previous experiences you were seeing with the, uh, with the craft. Now, as we know with this subject, with repeat uh, experiences, it doesn't really matter what address you're, you, you live at. Now with paranormal type experiences, you can sometimes get a particular location that may be haunted as such, and you move away from that location, and whatever it is that's there doesn't follow. With uh, contact, you tend, it tends to be the opposite of that. It tends to be that no matter where you go, these things can happen and, and can follow you around. Uh, and this, this is the reason why uh, some repeat contactees actually move house quite a lot throughout their life. They're constantly moving uh, house, you know, kind of subconsciously trying to get away from, from what's happening in their life. Starting with this tingling sensation in his feet that sort of came up his legs. So even from the start of the experience, there was these unusual aspects uh, to what was taking place. It wasn't just a, a visual thing, he was actually feeling something going on in the room. Uh, quite often experiences like this will start uh, with essentially kind of feelings uh, they can, it can often be a sort of sense of uh, a presence or, or that something's about to take place before something's even seen um, then there's this uh, dull white light that begins and starts to kind of spread out from this point na uh, down near the end of the room and from that emerges this black silhouette now this is john's uh, drawing of the uh, of the figure that he saw there 
And you can see that it's not a kind of typical shape of a, of a gray. Um, it looks more, more humanoid, essentially. Uh, even looked kind of like it had, so I think you mentioned it, it looked like it had sort of curly hair, um, the, the silhouette. So it looked humanoid in, uh, in, in its shape, at least. Uh, and it was completely black, probably because it's silhouetted against the light. The sudden disappearance of the, of the being, so just like the craft that we talked about, the sudden disappearances, beings that are seen by people can just vanish like in split seconds sometimes. Uh, sometimes they seem to kind of fade away into nothing. Other times they'll just be there one minute, gone the next. Uh, or people just kind of settle back down to split, sleep. A lot of these aspects are, are very, very regularly reported. Once again, there are numerous possibilities for this, um, this rather unusual experience. Uh, so the first of these uh, I've already mentioned earlier on in the talk, uh, hypnagogia. So some of the aspects of this do fit in with hypnagogic experiences. As I mentioned with hypnagogia, you can feel strange things, you can feel kind of senses of vibrations, uh, you can feel like your body's being pulled different ways. Um, so not all experiences with these kind of sensations are necessarily a direct contact experience. Now, What's interesting about this is essentially this white light and the figure stepping through it, which does kind of suggest that it was coming forward from some kind of vortex or portal. Uh, there's another possible exp um, thing that there's a shadow being. Uh, I've actually mentioned them in my, uh, my game UFO wave to link it into the paranormal. But uh, lots of um, experiencers, uh, contactees, will see shadow beings around their proximity, usually around their own home, because that's where they spend the majority of their time. Um, and these, uh, these dark kind of hooded figures can sometimes look almost like hooded monks uh, and, uh, and, they'll, and they'll see them around their home. So it's kind of a more paranormal nature. And some people believe that these figures themselves are alien beings kind of putting on a, a persona, a disguise, like a screen memory. And you've heard me talk about screen memories before, so essentially hiding their true appearance from the individual. Or was it indeed a humanoid ET, so a, a being, an alien being, but a humanoid? Now, um, there are numerous types slash species that people regularly report. Uh, the most common type is, of course, the, uh, the little grey guys, uh, and you, know, you will hear us talk of them uh, in this talk. Uh, but uh, in this case, it was this humanoid uh, figure. Now, Quite a lot of the time, people will see humanoid type ETs in actual fact. Sometimes they look so human that they feel that they could literally walk amongst us and wouldn't be detected. Uh, otherwise known as Nordics or Pleiadians, uh, some of them referred to them as. So uh, was it a humanoid ET that was there in silhouette and you didn't see its form because of the light behind it? Uh, these are all possibilities.